The first is scientific curiosity. The second one is being a communicative person. The third one is um, be able to plan yourself, your program. And also the last one is you must be a social person because you need to communicate with many people, with many organizations during your study. So that's why you have to be communicative, you have to be social, you have to be able to plan your activities, not only for yourself, but also for your examiner. Planning, to be able to plan yourself is very vital. One thing that is very important, I think, is to know what science is to you, because you'll be doing science and I guess you should know what you're doing. And the second thing is to be able to manage your literature, your citations and the knowledge or information you get from the literature well, because the most frustrating thing is if you know that you've read something and then you won't be able to find it again. Helpful, uh, the ability to concentrate, to be disciplined, to have stamina and to be able to accept critique. Well, there are many skills and I can offer maybe from my point of view four. First, I would say it's independent and critical thinking. This is in the whole process of your PhD studies and your thesis writing, especially in the, in the part of literature reviews. It really helps you to identify what exactly you want to do and what it's your step in contributions. And uh, the second one be humble. I mean, as so many of my peers are very self-centered and uh, even though we know we need help, but uh, people are not really let others to help. So I think be humble to receive the critics as well from your peers. And uh, in many times you could also ask for help. And then it's connected with the third point. So I think uh, my suggestion is like you can publicize your topic. I always believe everyone is ready to help you if you if they really know what you are doing. And uh, this is very important. I think it's very practical as well. Uh, unless people knowing what I'm doing, everyone's kind of sending me emails because when they came across with whatever the ratings, conference, seminars, uh, they first think, okay, this guy is doing this topic. So it's very useful in, with my experience. And also self-discipline, I think it's also very important. I think for academia, everyone understands how important the deadline is. You know, we always catching up with the last day, last minute to submit our papers or abstract. And I think for the, you know, for the, T the PhD thesis, it's a long process. So it's better you have a scheduled date and then you can make everything done in due time. Otherwise, you would accumulate a lot of pressure at the end. Well, um, doing a PhD means one has to be very much um, disciplined in a certain way, not only because you have to do a lot of reading and writing and you have deadlines and you need to keep up with the rhythm, but also because, as I said, it's quite a lonely journey. And to a certain extent, you have your supervisor who is like um, supportive, but uh, the supervisor's role might also be more um, external. So because it's a, it's a lonely journey, you have to learn how to discipline yourself and, and focus a lot on what you're doing because it's easy to get distracted by other stuff. Um, so you would have to be able to, to create um, schedules to try to keep deadlines. It's always important to have like deadlines when you're um, embarking on something, whether it's like writing the PhD or writing chapters of it or writing papers um, for journals. It's good to have um, deadlines in mind because that keeps you within um, uh, a certain rhythm. At the same time, it, would, it is also okay to exceed those deadlines and, and go beyond them. That is definitely going to happen no matter how well disciplined one is. Um, so it's also quite important to keep in mind that it's, it's okay to go beyond these deadlines. It's not, um, it's not the end of the world, but it's, at the same time, it is useful to have some kind of like structure in your head and renew that structure every once in a while um, on the basis of what you see you can achieve and, and what not. And um, so I would say, yeah, in general, I would say it's, it's, it's good to have a kind of a sense of structure 
and trying to keep it as close as possible without being disappointed if that's not always the case. One very important thing I think is that you should be able to read and write a lot. And another thing is that you should be okay with very tedious work where you have to be really precise and redo things over and over again. Since doing PhD is a highly time consuming process, you need to save some time during your uh, study. Fast reading is very helpful for your, your study because uh, you need to read a lot. If you start to read everything by uh, word by word, then you cannot manage your time well. That's why fast reading is very helpful uh, in your study. Another thing is IT technologies that you, you may easily use and very helpful. Not only to reach uh, numerous uh, articles, e-articles, e uh, electronic articles, but also academic networks, which are full with uh, books and articles, periodicals, etc. So all the, these are very helpful. But IT technologies are helpful not only because of a literature review, but also when you are formatting your final paper.